Hello everybody and welcome to our Hogue Metastatic Breast Cancer podcast focused on mindfulness and meditation for the month of March 2023 and we will be focusing on our journey as we continue through the book Nomad No Lotus, The Art of Transforming Suffering by Thich Nhat Hanh. And we're nearing the end of this beautiful book and the practice that I'll be talking about today, which is an essential part of a mindfulness practice and meditation practice, is metta. Metta meditation is a practice of cultivating understanding, love, and compassion by looking deeply, first for ourselves and then for others. Once we love and take care of ourselves, we can be much more helpful to others. Metta meditation can be practiced in part or in full. Just saying one line of the metta meditation will already bring more compassion and healing into the world. And this is something that we need in these times filled with so much chaos and so much collective suffering. Thich Nhat Hanh teaches us that to love is first of all to accept ourselves as we actually are. That is why in this love meditation, know thyself is the first practice of love. When we practice this, we see the conditions that have caused us to be the way we are. This makes it easy for us to accept ourselves, including our suffering and our happiness at the same time. Metta means loving kindness in Pali, which is an ancient language that originated in South Asia and the Indian subcontinent. We begin this with an aspiration, may I be. Then we transcend the level of aspiration and look deeply at all the positive and negative characteristics of the object of our meditation, in this case, ourselves. The willingness to love is not yet love. We look deeply with all our being in order to understand. We don't just repeat the words or imitate others or strive after some ideal. The practice of love meditation is not auto-suggestion. We don't just say, I love myself, I love all beings. We look deeply at our body, our feelings, our perceptions, our mental formations, and our consciousness. And in just a few weeks, our aspiration to love will become a deep intention. Love will enter our thoughts, our words, and our actions, and we will notice that we have become peaceful, happy, and light in body and spirit, safe and free from injury and free from anger, afflictions, fear, and anxiety. When we practice, we observe how much peace, happiness, and lightness we already have. We notice whether we are anxious about accidents or misfortunes, and how much anger, irritation, fear, anxiety, or worry are already in us. As we become aware of the feelings in us, our self-understanding will deepen. We will see how our fears and lack of peace contribute to our unhappiness, and we will see the value of loving ourselves and cultivating a heart of compassion. In this love, meditation, anger, afflictions, fear, and anxiety refer to all of the unwholesome negative states of mind that dwell in us and rob us of our peace and happiness. Anger, fear, anxiety, craving, greed, and ignorance are the great afflictions of our time. By practicing mindful living, we are able to deal with them, and our love is translated into effective action. This is a love meditation adapted from the Vishuddhimaga, the path of purification, by Buddha Gosa, a 5th century CE systematization of the Buddha's teachings. To practice this love meditation, sit still, calm your body and your breathing, and recite it to yourself. The sitting position is wonderful for practicing this. Sitting still, you are not too preoccupied with other matters, so you can look deeply at yourself as you are, cultivating your love for yourself and determining the best ways to express this love in the world. So wherever you are in this moment, just come to a comfortable seat. 
And I'll be going through this meditation. So just arrive, bringing some stillness to the mind, stillness to the physical body. Drawing the attention inwards. May I be peaceful, happy, and light in body and spirit. May she be peaceful, happy, and light in body and spirit. May he be peaceful, happy, and light in body and spirit. May they be peaceful, happy, and light in body and spirit. May I be safe and free from injury. May she be safe and free from injury. May he be safe and free from injury. May they be safe and free from injury. May I be free from anger, afflictions, fear, and anxiety. May she be free from anger, afflictions, fear, and anxiety. May he be free from anger, afflictions, fear, and anxiety. May they be free from anger, afflictions, fear, and anxiety. Begin practicing this love meditation on yourself. Until you are able to love and take care of yourself, you cannot be of much help to others. So as I always keep saying in our groups every month, the practice must begin with ourselves. After that practice on others, he, she, and they. First on someone you like, then on someone neutral to you, and then on someone you love. And finally on someone the mere thought of whom makes you suffer. According to the Buddha, a human being is made of five elements called skandhas in Sanskrit. They are form, body, feelings, perceptions, mental formations, and consciousness. In a way, you are the surveyor, and these elements are your territory. To know the real situation within yourself, you have to know your own territory, including the elements within you that are at war with each other. In order to bring about harmony, reconciliation, and healing within, you have to understand yourself. Looking and listening deeply, surveying your territory, is the beginning of love meditation. Begin this practice by looking deeply into your body. Ask, how is my body in this moment? How was it in the past? How will it be in the future? Later, when you meditate on someone you like, someone neutral to you, someone you love and someone you hate, you also begin by looking at their physical aspects. Breathing in and out, visualize their face, their way of walking, sitting and talking, their lungs, their heart, their kidneys and all the organs in their body, taking as much time as you need to bring those details into awareness. But always start with yourself. When you see your own five skandhas, clearly understanding and love arise naturally. And you know what to do and what not to do to take care of yourself. Look into your body to see whether it is at peace or is suffering from illness. Look at the condition of your lungs, your heart, your intestines, your kidneys, and your liver to see what the real needs of your body are. When you do, you will eat, drink, and act in ways that demonstrate your love and your compassion for your body. Usually, you follow ingrained habits, but when you look deeply, you see that many of these habits harm your body and mind, so you work to transform your habits in ways conducive to good health and vitality. Next, observe your feelings, whether they are pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. Feelings flow in us like a river, and each feeling is a drop of water in that river. 
Look into the river of your feelings and see how each feeling came to be. See what has been preventing you from being happy and do your best to transform those things. Practice touching the wondrous, refreshing and healing elements that are already in you and in the world. Doing so, you become stronger and better able to love yourself and others. Then meditate on your perceptions. The Buddha observed, the person who suffers most in this world is the person who has many wrong perceptions, and most of our perceptions are erroneous. You see a snake in the dark and you panic, but when your friend shines a light on it, you see that it is only a rope. You have to know which wrong perceptions cause you to suffer. Please write beautifully the sentence, are you sure, on a piece of paper and tape it to your wall. Love meditation helps you learn to look with clarity and serenity in order to improve the way you perceive. Next, observe your mental formations. The ideas and tendencies within you that lead you to speak and act as you do. Practice looking deeply to discover the true nature of your mental formations, how you are influenced by your individual consciousness and also by the collective consciousness of your family, ancestors and society. Unwholesome mental formations cause so much disturbance. Wholesome mental formations bring about love, happiness and liberation. Finally, look at your consciousness. According to Buddhism, consciousness is like a field with every possible kind of seed in it. Seeds of love, compassion, joy, and equanimity. Seeds of anger, fear, and anxiety. And seeds of mindfulness. Consciousness is the storehouse that contains all of these seeds. All the possibilities of whatever might arise in your mind. When your mind is not at peace, it may be because of the desires and feelings in your store consciousness. To live in peace, you have to be aware of your tendencies, your habit energies, so you can exercise some self-control. This is the practice of preventive health care. Look deeply into the nature of your feelings to find their roots to see which feelings need to be transformed and nourish those feelings that bring about peace, joy, and well-being. We'll be exploring this concept more in our Metastatic Breast Cancer Mindfulness Group in March. I hope that you enjoy this month's podcast. I encourage you to listen to it as many times as you need to and do the practice of Meta offered in it. I also suggest that you spend some time journaling after listening to the podcast or after listening to the meditation so that you can offer yourself some time to sit in deep reflection, which can be a wonderful, calming antidote for these times. Wishing you a month ahead filled with love and compassion for yourself and all of humanity. Stay safe and well.